Okay, uh, so let me start off by saying that I promise this is an art channel, and I promise not all of my stories will be, uh, as unique as this one, but this, this has just been something that's been on my brain for a while, and I just have to tell you about it because if not, I'm going to explode. So quick warning, this story centers around dead animals. Uh, I don't do anything with the animals, it's just a story has dead animals in it, and if it's not something you want to hear about, I totally understand, and I hope to see you back in another video. Uh, please come back. <laughs> but for those of you still remaining, let me set the scene for you. Imagine, you're driving down an unfamiliar winding road and you're heading toward a town you've never been to before to take care of some kind of business. I don't know, you do you. But anyways, you reach this small town and everything seems pretty normal. There's people out and about running errands, living life. There's a few mom and pop shops here and there. And at the center of it all is a public park that you just happen to need to drive through. So you're driving through this park and suddenly something catches your eye in a nearby tree. It's a large, dark object swaying in the breeze and at first you have no idea what it is. So you slow down to get a better look. And that's when you realize. It's a dead bird that someone intentionally strung up for display and it's not just any bird but a huge freaking vulture. It's hanging upside down, the rope is tied to its feet and its wings are spread out just dangling there. So who would do this, you might be thinking? Some kind of sadist or potential serial killer in the making? The park is empty, so there's no one really to suspect, but your true crime brain comes on and you're like, yep, someone put this here in a public park to leave a message. But what if I told you that message wasn't that there's some murder on the loose, but that it's a warning to other vultures? This, my friends, is what is called a vulture effigy, and apparently it's one of some of the odd methods that people use to deter vultures from gathering and resting in particular areas. My husband actually took me to a town that was doing this, and we saw two effigies in different trees of this local park, and then three effigies tied to the water tower of their town at various levels. He learned from a local that hundreds of vultures would gather at that water tower every sunset, and while the feeling alone of having so many birds associated with death just staring you down might be enough for a town to do something, apparently vultures can be pretty destructive in large groups. They've been known to tear off shingles, rip plastic and vinyl things like pool covers and awnings, and their poop and vomit is super acidic and corrodes metals and electrical wires that can actually lead to power outages. Not to mention it gets on like literally anything else. This uh, vulture damage handout I found from Orange County, Florida even mentions it's been reported that vultures harass pets and some people slash cultures experience a general feeling of doom or discomfort when they see vultures hanging around their homes. And I mean, I get it, you know, that sounds kind of rough, but hanging up a dead bird like some kind of weird sacrificial ritual in a Blair Witch movie, what does that even do? And can anyone just go around hanging effigies up? Well, according to National Geographic, vultures are protected in the United States by the Migratory Bird Treaty Act, which makes it illegal to harass or kill them even on private property. Violators can face penalties of up to $15,000 and six months in prison. However, if you get a special nuisance permit from the United States Department of Agriculture, you're then allowed to legally harass these birds, including killing a few to make effigies. Weird, right? Like, <laughs> I, I didn't know this was a thing. Some sources say that these effigies are apparently the most effective at keeping vultures away because it creates a sense of danger or it's like jarring to see one of their own dead and displayed all unnaturally. And I mean, you know, I'd probably feel the same way. I mean, I felt the same way just seeing the bird, but, uh, but again, other sources say that it doesn't really do much and that after a period of time, if it does work, vultures may see it as more of a curiosity and may even eat the remains. Other harassment techniques include the use of motion-activated sprinkler systems, lasers, pyrotechnics like flashers and bangers fired off from specialized pistols, and propane cannons, to name a few. So vultures must be the scourge of the earth and need to be eradicated or something, right? Uh, not at all. <laughs> They're pretty cool creatures in my opinion, especially since one of their primary functions in our world is to prevent the spread of carcass-borne diseases. With their body fluids being so acidic, they basically eliminate a lot of viruses and bacteria that could prove harmful to us humans. They're nature's little biohazard cleanup crew and very much needed. 
Now I'm pretty much scared of any bird. <laughs> They've got those beady little eyes and sharp beaks and claws and I had one that perpetually tried to attack me every morning I left my house for months all because I looked in her nest in my birdhouse and she thought I was gonna like eat her babies or something. Uh, but I digress. I can respect and admire them from afar, like very, very far away. But uh, but yeah, I wanted to draw this little vulture tamer girl who's all like, I love you vulture, just the way you are. Your home is with me. You can stay here as long as you like because I just heard about this and I experienced it and saw it for myself and I was like, this is this is weird. This is really weird. So uh, definitely let me know if you're still listening, if you've actually seen this in your town or if you've heard about it because this was the first I had like ever experienced it. And again, pretty weird. But, uh, but anyways, I hope you guys like this video and my drawing, and if you want to hear about more weird, wonderful, and sometimes not so wonderful stories about the world and watch me literally draw inspiration from them, please subscribe, like, comment, all those fun things, and I'll see you soon.